feel. Hello, people of the internet. Today I have a special review for you because I'm reviewing my 2021 Ford Bronco Black Diamond Edition, which I named Pokey, like the horse from Gumby. Anyway, today I'm going to get this thing up on the lift, do a mechanical review, nerd out on the tech specs, and then we're gonna take it out in the desert and give this thing some scores. So without further ado, let's get Pokey up in the air. Forgot my rooftop tent kind of stops this from going all the way up. So first thing that must be addressed, the tow capacity on this Bronco is only 3,500 pounds. I don't even have a tow hitch on mine, which largely has to do with the type of suspension utilized on these trucks. They're just not meant to be tow rigs. And this is similar if you look at a lot of other pickup trucks, especially with five link rear ends that don't have a leaf spring and a solid axle and have off-road dampers. They just have lesser tow capacities because they're meant for off-roading. With that said, this five link rear end has a Dana 44 M220 solid rear axle with a Performa Track e locker because this is the black diamond package. But here's where things get a little bit different because I upgraded my black diamond edition with a set of Bilstein 6100 height adjustable coilovers. And to finish it off, these guys right here are the OEM Sasquatch package springs. I've had this thing since the end of last year and I'm still discovering new things every time I'm underneath here. Ow! Ugh. Like to wear a helmet, Fuck. What I was gonna say is the wiring harness has a little heat protective jacket above the stainless steel exhaust on this thing, which is still stock. I haven't upgraded. I'm gonna see what the diameter of the piping is though. I'm curious. OEM piping diameter on the 2.3 EcoBoost is 65 millimeters, or for you SAE folk, two and a half inch piping. As you've already noticed, I ordered the two-door version of the 6G Bronco because four doors are for people with lazy children. And the Black Diamond Edition has five steel skid plates and weighs in at approximately 4,319 pounds or this many kilograms. None of that hairy cardboard nonsense under here. Oh, that's thick. My fuel tank has nipples. 16.9 gallon fuel tank, it's smaller on the two doors. What's a strange shape to a drive shaft? I want to paint you. This guy right here is the two speed transfer case, which has a 2.72 to one ratio in low range. And what in the C3PO's penis is going on over there? That is so sick. It's got gold heat shields. I, I don't want to put an aftermarket exhaust on here because I'd lose that. That is so cool looking. Ford, you're killing me though with not painting my drive shafts. I'm not happy about that. I want those painted. Somebody must have had a cold the day they were making this because they must have sneezed and they put that paint marker on there. I like the pink though. And this is the accoutrement of this Bronco. I don't know what that means. I'm French and I don't know what that means. <laughs> anyway, it's the Magna Getrag MTI 550 seven speed manual transmission. The only way to go in a Bronco, but you have to get the 2.3 liter four cylinder EcoBoost, not the one that's dropping valves. I'll get to that in a little bit. <laughs> that bad boy right there is a six speed plus one, making it a seven speed because it has a crawl gear by reverse, which is like half gear. It has a maximum torque input on this MT88 spec version of 600 Newton meters, which is 442 pound feet of torque. And in other applications of the MTI 550, it has a capability of 800 Newton meters, which is 590 pound feet, according to the Magna website. That is a stout manual transmission right there. And the front anti-sway bar measures in at 35 millimeters. Ease of maintenance wise, having the four cylinder is a benefit because this 
tons of room on the side of the engine and transmission. Downpipe's easy to get off. On this side, oh, thanks Ford for putting my oil filter down here. Wait a minute. <laughs> There's a little slide. There's a little plastic spout right here that the oil will drain into. Then it lands in this little tray and it comes down around and it drips out this little spout right here. I haven't had to do an oil change on it yet because I just barely hit a thousand miles. I'll probably do an early oil change on it though. As far as the front axle and diff goes, this is the Eaton M190. It has an open front diff. This is not the locker that you get on the top off-road models. However, Ford does sell separately the Eaton M220 with a 4.46 final drive ratio that you could swap into this thing if you wanted a locker on the front of a black diamond. Up front, the Bronco has twin forged aluminum A-arms, again with the Bilstein 6100 coilovers I installed. There's a link to that video up above if you wanna check it out. And two more skid plates. This one's got a nice texturized powder coating finish to match the bumper, which is a modular steel one. Pieces come off, you can add accessories like I did the light bar, but this is what makes a black diamond a black diamond. It's essentially a black diamond is a base model Bronco with the upper trim level off-road accessories added to it. All right, it's time for the braking test. No one behind me. Oh jeez, hope that tent stays on. Oh jeez! I, th I thought I was gonna, I thought I was gonna like do a stoppy. Oh, that was some nosedive right there. Granted, I did lift the thing. That was intense. All that weight too, the rooftop tent. Oh man. It stops good. That was just the most body roll I've felt in a braking test before. That braking was just accomplished with a set of 311 millimeter or 12.4 inch rotors, a two piston floating caliper, and the wheels I have upgraded from the factory Steelies, which I was a huge fan of, the Black Diamond Package's Steelies, but I put some TE37Xs in here in matte gun blue. They're a 16 by eight with a zero millimeter offset. And I went to a larger 285, 75, 16 inch, or essentially a 33 inch BF Goodrich all-terrain TA KO2 tire. But here's the thing. I lost unsprung weight by going to a larger tire because these Volk TE37s are so light in comparison to the factory wheel. That's almost impossible. You never see that going to a larger wheel and tire and then losing unsprung mass at the same time. Ah, damn. It does have some hairy cardboard. The black diamond package comes standard with these powder coated steel rock rails to protect the side of the truck. I also added this little plastic splash shield right here just to protect the paint since I don't have mud flaps yet. Out back there is a 308 millimeter rotor or 12.1 something inches and a single pot floating caliper. The wheel and tire, same size as up front. And to achieve a nice clean fitment, I upgraded to the Sasquatch fender flares from the factory black diamond ones. In the name of science, I am now gonna give this horse some beans. I've never done a bolstering test, I don't think, in a Bronco. So this should be interesting. Ready? It's got a little bit of bolstering to it, but because they're weatherproof seats, you kind of stick to them a little bit, so it holds you in place. There's no heat or ventilation in them, but you can take the roof off, that's ventilation. Drive control wise, there is a Kanabi down here by the shifter that also controls your two wheel drive and four wheel drive. You turn that and you can go from normal to eco, sport, the earth is on fire. Oh, when you put an eco, it does the start stop technology. Slippery, oh, shifting into four wheel drive and the earth is frozen. Mud in ruts, sand. Oh, that's weird. The sand has some frost on it. It's cold sand. Oh, I didn't even know it turns everything tan. In rock crawl, that definitely looks like a meatball. You have to put it in four low for that. I'm not going to use any of those. I'm going to keep it in sport. I'm also going to turn off traction control. Van track off. Okay. Give this thing a little bit of assistance and let it eat. Ready? Get it, little Bronco. Get it. It's pretty quick. 
hear that wind noise from my rooftop tent? There's some rocks. There we go. Yeah. Hood struts because I put hood struts on it. <laughs> Under the hood of my 2021 Ford Bronco is the 2.3 liter all aluminum dual overhead cam EcoBoost turbo four cylinder that produces 300 horsepower at 5,700 RPM and 325 pound feet of torque at 3,400 RPM when running premium fuel, which I always do. Everything you see under here is in factory spec. I only upgraded one thing and that was I added a Nuke Performance oil catch can with a custom bracket that I had fabricated and powder coated to match, as well as used black ANN lines and braided hose to make it look factory. Digging in a little bit deeper on this 2.3 liter four cylinder, it has a forged crank forged connecting rods, a 10.0 to one compression ratio with an 87.55 by 94 millimeter bore and stroke. It is direct injection only. That's why I added an oil catch can to this. Does not have port injection to clean the back of the valves. It has a single twin scroll Garrett Honeywell turbo and employs Ford's TI VCT variable valve timing system, which utilizes a computer controlled oil control valve on each camshaft to vary the cam timing up to 45 to 50 degrees of crankshaft angle. I know I'm gonna get at least 50 comments about my Bronco's engine's gonna blow up from people that likely don't know the difference between a Gallo 12 and a Gallo 24. Anyway, that was a issue that the 2.7 liter V6 EcoBoost engine, not this one, experienced from a bad batch of valves from the valve manufacturer that were produced in the month of April of 2021. Apparently those valves become brittle under heat and was causing them to drop, which is not something you want to happen in your engine. Uh, I know Ford is aware of the problem. I don't think they issued a recall for it, but hopefully they're doing the right thing and taking care of people that are having bad valves dropping, or if you're proactive and know that your vehicle is affected in the serial number range, you're taking it to get the valves hopefully replaced before they drop, or they're just gonna put a new engine in it. Either way, it's not that engine. So there's no right or wrong way to be a car enthusiast, I feel. There's lots of different types of enthusiasts that have different tastes and what they like in vehicles. But one common thing I see amongst a lot of people that are into cars is everyone gets a big smile on their face when they see an older version of one of their favorite vehicles that's just in like perfect condition. And it's just like, wow, that thing is super clean. And it's older, so you don't see it that often. I'm that type of enthusiast. I like having the vehicle that when it gets old, you're just like, dude, that thing is like a time warp. It's still super, super clean. With that said, keep that in mind when I'm taking this off-road. If you wanna see a real test of the sixth generation Bronco, I did the Bronco off-rodeo, where I there's trails there that are 10 times what anything out here is. There's nothing out here that'll be able to challenge this truck like at that off rodeo. So there's a link up to that video up above. With that said, I gotta do the hill climb test at least because I wanna see how my little Bronco does on hill climb. Okay, I'm going to switch this thing into uh, sand. I think sand is most appropriate. It's really slippery on this hill. I'm in four high, rear diff is locked. I don't need four low, I don't think. Here it goes. Go little bronquito. <laughs> that was, was like driving through a parking lot. <laughs> oh man, that was like zero challenge which whatsoever. It's a little bit different with a manual because you gotta have a little bit momentum because there's like that sweet spot between stalling out and actually making it through the obstacle. That's, I feel there is a slight benefit in some aspects with an automatic off-road, but that's all dependent on the skill of the driver also. Time to go back down. 
And the manual transmission equipped Broncos, at least the black diamonds like this, uh, come standard with hill descent control, which I've never used before. So I'm gonna select that. Now I presume since it works off of the brakes, I could just hold the clutch down or put it in neutral. That way I don't stall. Yep, okay. So I can hear it already doing a thing. This is kind of nice. I'm not gonna lie. I've, I've never tested a system like this in a manual transmission vehicle. Every press car I get, or press truck, is usually an automatic. There should be a dip right here. I think I avoided it. It's really quiet. I can barely hear it pulsating. Great. Yeah, that was, that was good. I want to try this obstacle out over here because I have such a short wheelbase. I've been wanting to test something short wheelbase over here. So, might as well use my little bronquito. I'm going to probably switch into rock crawl mode, even though this isn't rocks. I just, I want to try that mode because I haven't used it yet. The real question is, can I lock my diff in two wheel drive? Hell yeah, you can. So yeah, put it in rock crawl. Oh, so that selects four low. Advanced track off. Why, I might as well, I've never tried it. Now it turns like chocolate brown. I don't want to scuff up my rock rails on the side of the truck, but all right, uh, I'll use crawl gear too. Now I don't have the ground clearance approach, departure and breakover for this thing because it's modified because I have the Sasquatch springs and it is lifted with 33s. It's probably around 11 inches of ground clearance, 43 degree approach, 29 breakover and 37 departure. Just going off of figures from the other Bronco models with similar size tires and suspension. You don't even notice that. So many trucks scrape over there with longer wheelbases. I didn't even notice us going over it in this thing. Oh, I love this crawl gear. This thing's like a little goat. Oh, short wheelbases are awesome. That spot right there, every last truck I've tested over it has scraped hard on its rock rails or running boards or even without them, Some, one of them scraped the frame. You don't even notice it, this little thing. Love that. Ooh, this is gonna pucker my butt. Ew! I don't like this because I got a lot of weight in the roof of the roof rack. I'm teetering. It probably doesn't even look that bad outside. It's just nerve wracking inside. <laughs> that and because it's my truck, so. Good job, little bronquito. Man, do I love a short wheelbase. Two door Jeep owners, you know what's up. As far as the past seven, six, seven months or so of ownership goes, this little bronquito, I absolutely adore it. I've thoroughly enjoyed this thing every day since I've had it. It hasn't given me any issues. And again, there's a key to buying a lower trim spec of a vehicle, I feel. It just makes them more simplistic and less that can go wrong on them. It's quirky. It's got little fun things about it. They did Easter eggs in here just like Jeep did with the little logos that Jeep has like in the corner of the windows. This one's got little classic Bronco Easter eggs on it hidden all over the place. The back seat is plenty of room for me and I'm almost six foot tall. So it's fun if you want to bring some friends with you. I like that the back of the seat's got these little plastic cleats. Looks like the inside of a C-130. You can strap on your mole right there, as long as it doesn't weigh over seven pounds. No way, I do have a USB port back here. USB and USB-C, I didn't even know I had that. I haven't taken off the top and the rear yet, but these top panels come off like T-tops rather quickly. The interior, it took me three months to realize that it's actually a bluish gray in here and not just gray. It's got blue stitching all throughout and the blue accents that go with the black diamond package, which is really cute. There's actually a GoPro mount on the dash right here for well any kind of quarter 20 accessory you can screw into that. I thought the base infotainment system was great for what it was. I didn't really see a point in spending extra for the larger one because it has wireless fruit and robot compatibility. So you can just use navigation or music service off your smartphone and it appears on the screen or satellite radio, which I renewed the subscription just because I like some of the stations. I thought this was pretty cool. There's literally videos for the owner's manual that show you how to do things. Your Ford Bronco was built for the outdoors. 
It doesn't have any kind of like off-road telemetry on the head unit though, nor does it have the trail cam. So that's a little bit of a downfall. Over here on the side, you get some off-road telemetry. So you can go down here and get your pitch and roll. And then there's just random gauges that I have configured. The sound system itself is okay. It's definitely something that I would look into upgrading later on. I like that the vents remind me of an old school 80s Ford Ranger, just the shape of them, because my dad had an 87 Ranger when I was growing up, and it reminds me of that. The Black Diamond to me was the perfect package because of the fact that it came with some upgrades, it has some modern tech in it, but yet it still has rubber flooring that's easy to wash out with little drains and the vinyl seats. I was a little surprised with some of the standard safety features this thing came with for the price, like the collision avoidance robot eyeball and the automatic high beams. Fuel economy wise, the seven speed manual gets significantly better fuel economy than the 10 speed auto. Four miles per gallon better highway and two miles per gallon better city. Of course, I slightly ruined it when I put the roof rack on, but before I did, I was averaging just over 20 miles per gallon combined and that's driving in sport mode and getting on it every once in a while with the bigger wheels and tires, which didn't throw off my speedometer at all. It's dead on at 60 miles per hour. And of course they don't weigh any heavier than the factory wheels. With the roof rack, I lost like three or four miles per gallon, but I can always take it off if I want. The roof rack, not, I hate that I have to re-emphasize that. Hey, some flip-flops in the road. It's time to rate my Bronco, starting with the bean score. It's assessment on a one to five bean score based on the feeling you get in your gut when you give it the beans. And that little pokey horse right there when you give it the beans is getting a rating of 1.6 beans. It's, it's spunky. <laughs> it's it's kind of quick, it really is. It's kind of quick, especially with the manual transmission. It's just really fun and engaging to drive. Next is the cookie scores assessment on what you get for what you spend. And this two door black diamond edition is getting a rating of 4.7 cookies. This pairing, a two door black diamond with a manual, I personally feel is the best value combination you can get on this truck. That's why I ordered it in that spec with no other options added to it. And being just a hair over $37,000, I feel it's great value because these things can get super out of hand quick when you go to higher trim levels and start adding options to it. The Bronco Raptor, you could buy like three of these things for the price of a Bronco Raptor after dealer markups. That's that's insane. Next is the meatball scores assessment on a one to five scale based on a vehicle's off-road capabilities. And my 2021 Bronco black diamond with a seven speed manual and a few modifications is getting a rating of 3.3 meatballs. The only thing that really limits this off-road is the fact that it doesn't have the front locker and the fact that it doesn't have trail cams. That's kind of a letdown. Also, some people argue manuals aren't as good off-road as automatics, but again, I believe that's all on the driver's skill level. Next is the wrench score. It's an assessment on a one to five scale based on how much of an ass pain something would be to maintain. Uh, one being abysmal, five being super simple. And this little pokey horse getting a rating of Four wrenches. It's essentially the base model. There's not really anything added to it that will make it complex to work on. It's a four cylinder, so there's tons of room in the engine bay. It's the two door, so it's smaller, and it's a manual transmission. I purposely specced this one out like that because I'm a technician by trade, so <laughs> I find it highly easy to work on. So far, I haven't had any issues with anything I've done on it, so. Lastly though is the penguin score. It's assessment on a one to five scale based on how much I personally like something. And my little Bronco over there, over the past half a year of ownership, is getting a rating of five penguins. Would you expect me to give any less of a score? I'm the one that forked out almost 40 grand for the thing. So obviously I must like it. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm absolutely in love with this little truck. I'm really happy that I purchased it. I haven't had any issues with it yet. Doesn't mean they can't occur later in the future, but um, I adore this thing. I really do. I bought it to make content with, but I've grown to really love this little truck. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I will see you soon with another. Bye.